Good morning, everybody. And once again, I have to say how good it is to be here with you today, sharing the Word of God, and just taking a few moments to reflect on those words. Our scripture today is taken from John 16, verse 3. It's only seven words long. It's not a subject that many of us Christians like to talk about. John 16, 3. You will have suffering in this world. Now, one of the most difficult passages in the Bible to understand is Romans 5. Not only to understand it, but to accept it. Because Paul says we rejoice in our suffering because God's love has been poured into our hearts. According to an old saying, the only thing certain in life are death and taxes. But I'm waving my hand up at the back of the class and wanting to add suffering is in the mix as well. It's part of the human condition. I mean, if you get stranded on a desert island, you might never have to pay taxes. It's, it's not impossible. There are people in places of the Amazon Basin or in New Guinea who don't pay taxes. For that matter, suffering is actually more certain than death. Because in the Bible, for instance, at least two people... Enoch and Elijah, both of whom were apparently taken up directly by God, still breathing. They were not dead. Now here's a thought that came to me when I was preparing this. How long does it take for a healthy new baby to start screaming? <laughs> Usually just a matter of seconds. Suffering? It starts at the beginning. And it is with us throughout our lives. Now, it's not simply an avoidable reality. Christ imposed a duty, a duty on us to suffer. Christians are commanded to suffer more in many circumstances than the ungodly. Does that seem fair? I mean... This is not a popular sentiment among preachers. He knows the people sitting in the pews that don't want to hear how we are supposed to suffer. We, we want to hear that Christ suffered for us. We want to feel awed and deeply affected that his suffering made forgiveness of our sins possible. And who can blame us? But what exactly should we think Christ meant when he told us to take up our cross and follow me. He wasn't talking about the pretty silver cross to wear a one around one's neck. He wasn't telling us to follow him to the Last Supper and then go about our business. He was telling us to join him on the road to Calvary. Now, Gospel... The word means good news. Now, what I've just been talking about doesn't sound like good news. There is, of course, very good news to follow. The promise of forgiveness of sins and eternal life. But there is a smaller item of good news that we so often overlook. No matter how we suffer, we are walking up the road of Calvary. Christ is walking with us. All we have to do is give him our pain. It causes us unnecessary grief to think that we should not suffer when we are in pain. The pain is bad enough. I mean, things like illness, divorce, betrayal, grief, injuries, disappointment, heartache, crime, death. These are real and these are awful. But do you know what? You can make them even worse. If you want to make them worse, 
Just start thinking, this isn't supposed to happen to me. Or believe you're entitled to get a, to be free from and adversity and grief. You could start envying people who are younger, richer, fitter. You could fill yourself with anger at your misfortunes. You could turn your back on Calvary and try to outrun the human condition. But instead, we know Christ and do as he commanded. We should face our tribulations in the fullness of faith, without anger or envy, or in, and our entitlement fades away, and we are better equipped to take our suffering in our stride. Now, our pain diminishes, for with true faith, the joy of Christ is greater than the worst the world can inflict upon us. You know, no illustration could be more explicit than the account of Stephen's death, especially his death scene. Read Acts 7, 54 to 60. I, I hope sincerely that none of us will suffer as he did. Yet even at the moment he died, his gruesome death, he did not bemoan or complain about his ordeal. It is here that the Bible gives us the common people, the nameless saints of Christ's holy church, a model of how joy may overcome the pain of even the worst suffering as for his body when it was being crushed by stones Paul lifted his eyes to Christ and begged forgiveness from those in the process of cruelly murdering him and I quote and falling to his knees he cried out with a loud voice Lord do not hold this sin against them and when he said this, he fell asleep. Let us pray. Father God, we give thanks to you for this reading. We ask, Lord, that we may have rhema understanding of this word. We know, Lord, that we have a duty of suffering to walk with you, the road to Calvary. Lord, let us not try to complain and moan, but give us the richness of a full faith, knowing that we can hand this suffering over to you. Let us look, Father, at the example of so many early martyrs in your church. Let us seek to be models <laughs> and follow their example i ask this through jesus name amen amen thank you father okay well it's a difficult subject to discuss suffering i mean none of us want it but I suppose one of the things that I do find depressing in Christians is when they are suffering, they bemoan the fact and complain. There's little we can do, of course, but support them through prayer. Often there are some practical things we may be able to do to help them. But we have to, as Christians, accept, as I said earlier, that suffering is a duty imposed upon us by Christ, whether we like that or not. And I know this isn't an easy message for many people to hear. Wherever you are today, 
whatever your circumstances, whatever you're suffering today, I would ask that you go to the Lord and give him your burden. He's capable of taking it away. This too will pass. Something I learned many years ago. God bless you all. I hope you have a really good day. Bye for now.